Welcome to the Healthy at Home Home Visitor Training. Our objectives for the training include going over the Healthy at Home assessment, education and referrals, filling out the assessment, chronic disease, environmental health, home safety, and a post-test. The purpose of the Healthy at Home assessment is to create a standardized home safety assessment tool that integrates environmental health and chronic disease components into home visiting programs. The goal is to identify, refer, and track home visiting clients with chronic disease and environmental health needs, which will be a great improvement to identifying wellness issues for the home family. This project was funded by the Association of State and Territorial Health Officials and Robert Wood Johnson Foundation for the National Demonstration Initiative on Quality Improvement Practices. The Healthy at Home Assessment may be integrated into any home visiting program as a home safety assessment. For Health Start, the Healthy at Home Assessment will be administered to all current clients in the fourth or fifth month after infant birth. For HRPP and ICP, the Healthy at Home Assessment can be completed as part of a regular home visit to current clients as soon as possible, preferably in the first visit, but no later than the second visit. Any other home visiting programs wishing to use the Healthy at Home Assessment may specify their own administration schedule that meets their needs. Don't forget to keep the original assessment in the client chart and send the appropriate program manager a copy of the assessment and referral forms with monthly billing. The last page of the Healthy at Home Assessment is a referral and education checklist to facilitate referrals and identify resources that are available to families. All education materials for all of the topics on the checklist may be found on the ADHS website. Check or mark if a client was provided education or referred to any of the topics on the list. You may have to complete additional referral forms. When filling out the assessment form, please answer all questions as completely as possible. Mark an X or a check mark next to the right answer. The demographics section is pretty self-explanatory and is shown here. Household means all persons currently living in the home. When filling out the assessment, be sure to pick the best answer. Answer yes for yes, always, or most of the time, and no for no, sometimes, or almost never. If the family chooses not to answer a question, Mark the letter R for refused in the comment section or anywhere in the answer. When you see eyeballs, this indicates that the question needs visual confirmation by the home visitor in order to answer. For example, for the question, does the family have a working smoke detector, the home visitor must look at the smoke detector in order to answer the question. Now let's go over all the sections in the Healthy at Home Assessment. In the Chronic Disease section, the home visitor will ask the client if anyone in the home has a chronic disease. A yes to any chronic disease by anyone in the home who is 18 years or older is eligible to be referred to a chronic disease self-management program, which will be discussed later. A yes to any chronic disease by anyone should still trigger the home visitor to provide education or a referral to that specific chronic disease or just chronic diseases in general. Chronic diseases are illnesses that are prolonged in duration, do not resolve spontaneously, and are rarely cured completely. Examples include heart disease, cancer, lung disease, diabetes, and arthritis. 
ADHS has partnered with the Arizona Living Well Institute to coordinate efforts in Arizona to help improve the lives of adults living with chronic health conditions through the self-management program. This is an evidence-based program and studies found that participants had improved health and confidence in their ability to manage their condition. The Arizona Living Well Institute Healthy Living Program is a chronic disease self-management program that includes six-week workshops, meaning once a week, designed to help people with ongoing health programs and their caregivers manage them more effectively. Participants can choose what they want to work on and set goals. The workshops are highly interactive, emphasize on mutual support. The topics in the workshops include using your mind to manage symptoms, problem solving, managing emotions, fitness, reading food labels and improved food choices, better breathing, and working with health healthcare professionals and healthcare systems. As a home visitor, you will be provided a copy of the CDSMP fax referral form, or it can be found on the Healthy at Home website. Please fill out the fax referral with the CDSMP client. This is a person in the home who is interested in attending a chronic disease self-management program. It may not necessarily be the home visiting client. Then, fax the form to Arizona Living Well so that the client can be contacted and enrolled in a program. Then, send a copy of this form after faxing to AZ Living Well Institute with monthly billing to the appropriate program manager. If you are interested in facilitating a CDSMP workshop, please visit azlwi.org for more information. The environmental health section of the assessment includes lead poisoning and asthma triggers as some of the topics. Please provide education or a referral to environmental health resources if a need is identified. For example, if a family answers yes to does anyone smoke inside the home, should, they should be given tobacco and secondhand smoke education or may be referred to the Arizona Smokers Health Line. Under lead poisoning, please provide education material on lead if the client answers a yes to number 1, 2, and 5, and a no to number 6, this puts the family at high risk for lead poisoning. Under potential asthma triggers, please provide education material on asthma, smoking, secondhand smoke, or pest control if the client answers a yes to number 7 through 10. Some of you may be asking yourself, what if the family says their child has not been tested for lead poisoning, or if the family is unsure if the child has been tested? All children are considered at risk and must be screened for lead poisoning by their doctor. Blood lead testing is covered for all children enrolled in access. Have the parents speak to their child's primary care provider about blood lead testing, or call ADHS Office of Environmental Health at 602-364-3118 for more information. All children under the age of six years old are at risk for lead poisoning because of their developing bodies. Children also tend to put objects into their mouths which may be contaminated with lead dust. Children living at or below the poverty line and who live in older housing are at greatest risk. Lead poisoning can cause irreparable damage to a ch child's intelligence, hearing, and or growth. One of the most notable exposures of lead is paint. The federal government banned the use of lead in paint in 1978. However, many homes, painted toys, and furniture made before 1978 may still contain lead-based paint. Other sources of lead exposure include dust and soil, children's jewelry and toys, and workplaces. People exposed to lead at work may bring home lead on their clothes, shoes, or hair. 
Other sources of lead exposure include hobbies, leaded crystal and pewter, firearms with lead bullets, mini blinds, and car batteries and radiators. Lead exposure specific to Arizona and the southwest area includes Mexican lead glazed ceramics, imported candies or foods, and Mexican folk remedies. Asthma is the sixth leading cause of death in children in Arizona. An asthma attack can occur when people are exposed to irritants in the environment, such as house dust mites or tobacco smoke. These are called asthma triggers. Important asthma triggers include vapors from cleaning products, paint and paint thinner, sprays from furniture polish, starch and cleaners, spray deodorants, perfumes, hairspray, talcum powder, and scented cosmetics, vapors from furnishings, pesticide sprays, incense and scented candles, dust, pollen from trees, grasses, hay, and ragweed, mold, animals such as cats, dogs, and rabbits, dust mites, insects such as cockroaches, and secondhand smoke. If anyone in the household is a smoker, they may be eligible to be referred to the Arizona Smokers Helpline. If the family member is interested in getting help quitting, the Arizona Smokers Helpline provides free services in both English and Spanish, and quit coaches are real former tobacco users located in Arizona. Ashline also offers WebQuit, a web-based quitting tool. Referral options include filling out the Ashline Quit Facts referral form which may be found online. Ashline will call within 24 hours of receiving this form. You may also give family members the Ashline Helpline number and website. Children's safety is very important. The Arizona Child Fatality Review determined that 35% of all deaths could have been prevented. This includes 96% of firearm related deaths that were preventable and 94% of drowning deaths, 91% of motor vehicle deaths, 89% of accidental deaths, and 79% of home and safety related, related deaths were preventable. 64 infants died in unsafe sleep environments in 2011. This includes 42 infants who were placed to sleep in adult beds, and two who were placed to sleep on couches. Also, the rate of motor vehicle fatalities increased slightly from 2010. There are some topics in the Healthy at Home assessment that are specific for older adult safety. The top leading causes of hospitalization among older adults aged 65 and older in Arizona were injury, poisoning, respiratory diseases, and diseases of the digestive system and circulatory system. The most frequently occurring conditions among older persons in Arizona were hypertension, arthritis, all types of heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. In 2005, falls accounted for 59% of unintentional injury deaths among older adult residents of Arizona. Home hazardous waste can be a danger to home safety. Household products that contain toxic or ignitable ingredients are considered to be household hazardous waste and should be disposed of properly. Some products requir require special care when you dispose of them. Always remember to read the product labels for disposal directions. Improper disposal of hazardous waste can include pouring them down the drain on the ground or in storm sewers. Proper disposal can include throwing away sealed hazardous products in the trash or disposing through a local hazardous waste disposal collection program. Household hazardous waste products that should be disposed of properly include auto-related fluids, vehicle batteries and rechargeable batteries, electronics, household appliances, fire extinguishers and propane gas cylinders, 
pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides, pool chemicals, oil-based paints, latex paint, and syringes and medical supplies. Medicine requires special disposal. Before throwing in the trash, take med medications out of original containers and mix with an undesirable substance, such as used coffee grounds or kitty litter, to make the medication less appealing and unrecognizable. A note to any home safety question should prompt you to provide education and a referral to home safety resources. Home safety education and referral topics include the following. The first question under home safety is about hazardous materials. Provide home hazard education material if any of these questions are answered with a no. Ask where these household items are kept. They should be above the shoulder height of an adult or in a locked cabinet. Liquid hand soap may be kept on the counter out of the child's reach, but liquid dishwashing detergents must be safely stored. Help the parent relocate the products. Instruct the parent or provider that poisonings frequently happen when products are out of safe storage and in use. The next question is about child supervision. Children should be supervised at all times to prevent injury. Provide injury prevention, car safety, and water safety education material if this question is answered negatively. The next question is about toy safety. Provide toy safety education material if any of these questions are answered negatively. Small items can be trapped in a child's windpipe and cause choking. Question 4 is about choking hazards, such as small magnets, batteries, and toy parts. The next question covers small electrical appliances, a functioning battery-powered smoke detector, an electrical outlet, and electrical cord. Observe for small appliances that a child can pull on. Ask the parent or provider when the battery to the smoke detector was last changed. Look for tightly fitting safety plugs or other types of outlet protectors. Cords must not run under, under carpets or rugs and should not be frayed or exposing electrical wire. These next huh. questions are about space heaters and fans, plastic bags and balloons, and tall lamps, TVs, and furniture. Space heaters and fans should not tip over easily, be at least three feet from things that can catch fire, and have a covering to protect children. Tall lamps, TVs, and furniture are easily tipped over and present risk for injury. These next questions are about unattended containers of liquid, firearms, and stairs. Containers of liquid should be emptied immediately after use and are drowning risks for young children. Ask about firearms in the home, but do not ask to see weapons. Guns should be unloaded, locked, and stored separately from ammunition, which is also locked. Examine stairs for tripping hazards. All structures should be sturdy. Balconies should have a, have a wall or protective railing at least 36 inches high. These next questions are about glass panels, child safety seats, smoking materials, and falls. Suggest the parent remove glass panels. Tempered glass is seven times stronger than regular window glass. In Arizona, children under five require a child safety seat, and all children between the ages of five and seven and shorter than four feet nine inches tall require a booster seat. Ashtrays present both burn and poison risks, and falls among persons 55 and older have a higher risk for unintentional fall-related deaths. Kitchen safety questions include 
questions about knives, pot handles, and alcoholic beverages. Ask the parent where the knives, scissors, and appliance blades are kept. Ask about pots on the stove and encourage the parent to use the rear burners whenever possible. Also, help the parent choose safe places for appliances and make sure they are unplugged. The bathroom safety section covers hot water, non-skid material on the tub floor, and toilet lids. If needed, help the parent locate the water heater control and set temperature. The landlord may be, need to be contacted to lower hot water temperature. The parent should also test the water in a tub or shower with their elbow before placing a child in. Skid resistant or a suction secured mat on a tub or shower floor are recommended. For the child area safety, make sure the child has a separate sleeping area, the crib is free from loose bedding, and the mattress fits snugly in the bed frame. Recommend removing large stuffed animals, bumper pads, and pillows from the crib. Measure the distance between the slats, and if any space is greater than a soda can width, recommend a new crib. Also make sure there is no plastic on the mattress. Also for the child area, make sure the crib or bed is away from windows, pictures, and wall hangings, mobile baby walkers are absent, and car seats and bouncers are off counters and tables, and dra drapery or mini blind cords are out of the child's reach. Pictures and wall hangings should be at adult's shoulder height and firmly attached to the wall. It is best not to use baby walkers, but if used, child should never be left without adult supervision. Observe for drapery or mini blind cords that are close to the crib and could be a hazard. Recommend making the cords shorter. For outdoor safety, make sure the home address is clearly visible from the street Pathways are cleared of debris, and if there's a swimming pool, there's an isolation fence in good condition and gates are securely locked or are self-latching and closed, and helmets are used while riding a bicycle or other wheeled equipment and are put away. Remind the parent that a visible address is important if emergency personnel are called, and pool fences should be intact and gates should close automatically. For emergency safety, make sure the home has two unobstructed exits and unobstructed exits in the bedrooms. Families should discuss emergency evacuation routes and families should have emergency medical services and poison control phone numbers in their home and cell phone. That is all for the Healthy at Home training. Be sure to complete the post-test and return it to the appropriate program manager at ADHS.